going to be working on this Airstream today. And what we're doing is that oil cooler housing right there where the filter hangs out of the side of the engine. We're going to be resealing that on here. So, got the coolant draining out of it right now. Once we get that drained down, go ahead and get the oil drained, get the filter off of it. And we'll start getting that cooler pulled out of the side of the engine. It's going to take a little bit here. When you guys are working on big trucks, these containers great for coolant, great for oil. They hold liquid, they're large, and they're cheap. I mean, this is uh, 54 quarts this holds. I'll try to get a drain pan that price. It's going to cost you 10 times what this does. Now, they are a little fragile, so be careful with them. You, know, you can't throw them around like a drain pan, but they work perfect, especially when you got good coolant in there that you want to use. Went and got my oil drain pans ready. Still just draining coolant here. I imagine this is going to take a little while. Getting ready to crawl under there and get the oil filter off while the coolant's draining. Yesterday, though, I went and got uh, gloves for the first time in oh, probably a year. Damn, these things have gotten expensive. A box of gloves is 20 bucks. I mean, before I was just ordering by the case for the shop, and I guess I really didn't sit and do the math to figure out what they were costing me a box, but holy crap, I can't believe how expensive these are right now. Anyway, just crawl under there. I got this pan here because I'm just going to stab a hole in the filter and then take it off and then I got my actual drain pan for the rest of the oil. Well, this will work for just doing the filter. Alright, I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see, but I'm trying to get this halfway decent down here. Before somebody goes complaining, no, this isn't a screwdriver, these are actually pry bars from Mac. They're made to be hammered on. But anytime you do a big truck filter, just stab a hole in it, let it drain itself, make your life easier. Alright, I had to run out for a few minutes to go pick up the neighbor's trailer. So we can haul that 671 off to scrap. But while I was doing that, this thing looks like it finished draining coolant. The filter finished draining out. Eh, wasn't too bad. <sighs> well, we got that off there. Go ahead and get the coolant drain closed. Look at this coolant moved out of the way. Go grab my other drain pan. We'll get the engine oil drained out of it real quick. Just make sure that all that stuff's already done. Ready before we start tearing into this. Starting to get the bolts out of this thing. I've got them all pretty much broke loose, but there's 15 of them if I remember right to go around this. So. Trying to get them all loose enough where they can get taken out by hand and then we'll get this out of there. Now I did remove the turbo drain tube, which I was concerned that that was leaking. And when I went to go take it off, I actually found a loose bolt on the turbo side of that. So I think that confirms that we had a leak coming from there. I also noticed a few other things while I'm down here. Mufflers rotted out at that strap. It's rotted a hole through it right here at the frame. And back through here so while it's here we're gonna see about getting a new exhaust on it everything from the turbo into the top of the muffler looks good so we'll just have to go through back here got the housing broke loose there I've got two bolts in it so then when I tapped it with the dead blow to break the seal on it it wouldn't go flying got to drain it down here into a pan so let that drain for a minute and I'll take those other two bolts back out and then we'll get the uh, filter housing section of the cooler out and we'll see about getting the core out all right so this is the filter housing section of the oil cooler it's the outside plate for it gonna need to get all that cleaned up but we got it off 
did fight me a bit though because we had this fitting right here and this hard line to the top of the turbo for the oil feed. Fortunately, this fitting was just solid on there. I could not get to it with a wrench. So I ended up having to loosen it up, kind of fish the whole thing out as one once I got this fitting loose enough to be able to swivel and it was a little bit of a fight, but we got it. Bites apart. I'm going to go ahead and we'll replace these O-rings. We'll get a new seal for there. We're going to do it all. Um, when you're this far into it already, I always just say you might as well just fix it all, get it done right, get it all resealed, and it won't be a problem again. Mounting surface of the engine all cleaned up in there. I'm going to wipe it down with brake clean real quick, make sure we're not missing anything. If we are, we'll go back and touch it up one more time. And we'll uh, start getting this cooler assembled. We've got our new cooler here, which today is tomorrow because we had to go get a new cooler core, which I'm going to clean this whole thing up very clean before we get it all ready to go in. Well, the old one had a ton of cavitation signs all around the edge of the cooler fins here. So since we had it out and in hand, I figured it was a better call just to go ahead and replace the core. And we know that we don't have any issues with it. So we have a new core here. This housing was cleaned up yesterday, but not cleaned up very well. So I'm going to run through give this another cleaning it's at least yellow now it wasn't when we started we get this cleaned up we'll get the fitting in for the turbo blow out all of this make sure that there's no contamination we'll start bolting this back to the side of the engine got the core and the housing up in there had to get a little bit of assistance from dad i injured my left wrist the other day working on the scenic cruiser so trying to lay my back hold that up and start bolts wasn't uh working as a one-person deal so we got up in there getting all the bolts in it now we'll get them snugged up just want to make sure that all the bolts are started before I run them down I'm just gonna snug them down with that quarter inch ratchet and then we'll get the torque wrench out and get this thing torqued up in there went ahead and vacuum filled the cooling system all the coolant side of this should be tight and done. I still just need to finish oil lines, but looking pretty good. I'm going to let that sit overnight, though, and then I'll pull the drain plug. Make sure that we're not getting any oil or coolant mixed, which I don't expect to be, but it's towards the end of the day, so we're going to go ahead and do that, and that'll just let us know for sure. Got the feed and drain line hooked up to the turbo this morning. Oil filter's on and primed. Got oil and coolant in it. Getting ready to start it up. try out this super clean foaming degreaser on this cat that we just resealed the oil cooler on. See how that goes. All right, so we went ahead and cleaned the engine off after we ran it. I didn't see any leaks. We went ahead and just sprayed it down with some degreaser, hosed it off, and it's looking pretty good. Well, that's going to do it for the oil cooler side of this. Still got a few other issues to work on while it's here. We're gonna see about getting that exhaust fixed up on it. Cause it's got a pretty nasty leak over here. Gotta fix uh, some issues with the HVAC system and a few other minor things, but nothing too crazy.